the 68th annual meeting of the National Student Nurses Association will now come to order. I am Brandi Gordon, president of the National Student Nurses Association and a nursing student at the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. Please note that I will be taking questions in the chat only. Please keep your questions germane to the business at hand. If I am a unable to answer all your questions during the meeting, I will respond following the meeting. Be sure to stay online after this meeting is adjourned for the drawings for great prizes. You must be present to win. As the presiding officer, I would like to recognize the NSNA Board of Directors, committee members, consultants, and staff who are with us today. As I call your name, please unmute your microphone and say, I am present and wave. Luis Diaz, Vice President, Tarrant County College, Fort Worth, Texas, unable to attend. Stacy Kinsey, Secretary Treasurer, Baylor University, Dallas, Texas. I'm present. Andrea Romano, Imprint Editor, Villanova University, Villanova, Pennsylvania, unable to attend. Jalea Townsend, Breakthrough to Nursing Director, Georgia Baptist College of Nursing at Mercer University, Atlanta, Georgia. I am present. Nicholas Fulmer, Director, Indiana University, East Richmond, Indiana, unable to attend. Emily Bruner, Director, Tarleton State University, Stephenville, Texas. I am present. Kyle Luce, Director, the Pennsylvania State University, University Park, Pennsylvania. I am president. Present. <laughs> Nicole Abel, Director, University of Nevada, Las Vegas, Nevada. Present. Alexis Hodges, Ex Officio Board Member, Chair of the Council of State Presidents, Aurora University, Aurora, Illinois. I'm present. Rosemary Mortimer, consultant appointed by the American Nurses Association. Present. Dr. Cheryl Taylor, consultant appointed by the National League for Nursing. Dr. Diane Mancino, executive director. I'm present. Lola I'm Fair. Present. Thank you, Dr. Taylor. Okay. Lola Fair, parliamentarian. Present. Nominating and Elections Committee. Isabella Algayer, Chair and Western Election Area Representative, Brigham Young University, Provo, Utah. Jessica Niebauer. Northern Election Area Representative, Siena Heights University, Adrian, Michigan, unable to attend. Jennifer Bustos, Southern Election Area Representative, University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences, Little Rock, Arkansas. I'm present. Katie Pereira, Eastern Election Area Representative, Drexel University, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I am present. Sorry, I lost my voice. Deborah Lewis, Staff Assistant to the Nominating and Elections Committee. I'm present. Resolutions Committee. Crystal Akau, Chair, Kathy Alani, Community College, Honolulu, Hawaii. I am present. John Palmer, Assistant Chair, University of Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania unable to attend. Olivia Christopher, Florida State University, Tallahassee, Florida, unable to attend. Cameron Houston, Centara College of Health Sciences, Chesapeake, Virginia. Hi, I'm present. Joelle Motley, Atlantic Cape Community College, Mays Landing, New Jersey.
Marshall Muehlbauer, Mount Mercy University, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Dr. Cheryl Schmidt, Staff Assistant for the Resolutions Committee. I'm present. Council of State Presidents Planning Committee. Members of the COSP Planning Committee are Alexis Hodges, Chair, President, Student Nurses Association of Illinois. I'm here. Dusty Birchfield, President, Texas Nursing Students Association, unable to attend. Jessica Alvarado, President, Nursing Students Association of New York State. Hi, I'm present. Jared Knight, President, Idaho Student Nurses Association, unable to attend. As NSNA president, I also serve on the cost planning committee. I am also pleased to introduce the following headquarters staff. Kenya Williams, Deputy Executive Director. Hi, I'm present. Dev Persaud, Director of Finance and Administration. I am present. Trisha Mims, Director of Program and Program. I am here. Sarah Zhao, Communications Specialist. I am here. Kathy Ramos, Membership Specialist. Hi, I am President. Lauren Sparrow, FNSNA Staff Specialist. Present. Jasmine Melendez, Scholarships and Grants Administrator and NSNA Special Projects Manager. I am present. Thank you. The first business in order is the count of the delegates to establish the quorum. In accordance with the requirements of the NSNA bylaws, the quorum consists of at least 51% of the total number of delegates credentialed and at least four members of the board of directors, including the president or vice president. The secretary treasurer will give the report. Stacy Kinsey. As of the cutoff date for delegate credentialing, which was April 16th, 2020, there are 343 delegates credentialed. As of today, there are 79 school and state delegates registered for this meeting from 21 states. There are state presidents or their representatives from the following 12 states. Arizona, California, Georgia, Hawaii, Illinois, Michigan, Nebraska, New York, North Carolina, Oklahoma, South Carolina, Wisconsin. There are six board members present, including the president, secretary, treasurer, breakthrough to nursing director, and three directors. And there are three members from the nominating and elections committee. What does that mean? What does that mean? Madam President, you are muted. Thank you very much. I'm sorry about that. I declare that a quorum is not present. Because there is no quorum present, I call on the parliamentarian, Lola Fair, for guidance. You all know that the definition of a quorum is the minimum number of people that must be present to conduct business. The purpose of the quorum is to not allow a small number of people to make decisions for a large organization. When a quorum is not present, no business may be conducted. That means we will not be doing any action today that requires voting. We will receive reports and questions may be asked, but there can be no action items considered. Thank you, Mrs. Fair. We will hear reports, but there will not be any voting. The minutes from the 2019 House of Delegates have been approved by the NSNA Board of Directors. A copy of the minutes is available in the delegates Dropbox link provided prior to the meeting. The meetings of today's 2020 business meeting will be approved by the 2020-2021 Board of Directors. I now call on Secretary Treasurer Stacy Kinsey to chair the meeting. Thank you. The next business in order is, to, is the address of the president. 
it gives me great pleasure to introduce Brandy Borden, NSNA president. Hello, NSNA members. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to join us for the NSNA annual business meeting. Throughout the past five months, our lives have been upended. Classes move from in-person to virtual. Some schools have added simulation hours to help offset the in-person clinical rotations. And we have moved through the various reopening phases of the cities and towns in which we live. To say we are living in unprecedented times is an understatement. However, we're overcoming obstacles and actively discovering how we can bridge the gap in our education and personal lives. For the first time in history, NSNA has utilized the virtual platform for our meetings, convention, and conferences. First, NSNA held online campaigning and voting for the 2020-2021 Board of Directors in nominating an elections committee. Newly elected board members and the NEC chair normally attend meetings in New York City for orientation to our new roles and responsibilities. Instead, due to the pandemic precautions, we met virtually. Thankfully, the NSNA staff were able to create a seamless transition with speakers and onboarding workshops, which covered governance and fiduciary responsibilities, rules of engagement, and parliamentary procedure. These provided valuable leadership lessons to get us ready for our very first virtual Board of Directors meeting in June. Second, NSNA looked ahead and instead of canceling the Summer Leadership U Conference due to the lockdown of New York City, we decided to hold it virtually. This allowed us to provide valuable information to our members as well as faculty advisors and share the many projects the board will be working on this year. We had over 300 students and faculty from 175 schools and 38 states in attendance. In addition, NSNA is holding our mid-year conference virtually October 29th through the 31st, 2020. Holding a virtual conference will allow more students, faculty, and administrators to attend. One of the major issues with meeting virtually is the inability to network. To overcome this obstacle, NSNA created a closed Facebook page specifically for the attendees of the Leadership Conference and will do the same for the Mid-Year Conference. We will also have online networking opportunities during the Mid-Year Conference to meet and mingle with each other as well as with exhibitors. This may well be one of the highlights of the year, so please don't miss it. Our incredible keynote speaker, Dr. Ernest Grant, first man to hold the position of president of the American Nurses Association, will inspire our engagement in professional organizations and the nursing profession. Last, state associations and school chapters are asking how to host virtual meetings and state conventions and conferences. NSNA staff has prepared a website with resources and guidelines to help facilitate online meetings. This will outline using a virtual platform, pre-recording speakers or having them live, and ways to share sponsor ads on social media. It can be used by both state and school chapters to reach their members and get them active on the local, state, and national levels. Watch for a broadcast email next week with the link to the new website. Although we are not considering resolutions at this meeting, NSNA has many resolutions to energize and inform chapter activities. Perhaps the most urgent is the Get Out the Vote campaign to encourage nursing and college students, as well as the general public, to register and vote in the upcoming national elections. This includes learning about and educating about the issues, especially those impacting healthcare and nursing education. See the NSNA website for more information. In addition to the Get Out the Vote campaign, there are opportunities for nursing students to take action on past resolutions that address gun safety, impact of, res impact of immigration laws 
on nursing students and equal rights for all. Another high priority is educating the public and our fellow college students about the safety and COVID-19. Who better to teach our peers about prevention, social distancing, and wearing masks than nursing students? During this time of uncertainty, we must learn how to adapt and be flexible as well as innovative. We must transform from the way we have done things in the past to strategizing our future post pandemic. Through the use of technology, we can deliver valuable information and stay connected. Whether we are within the same school or on opposite sides of the country, we can learn, grow and lead while also creating lasting memories. Thank you. Thank you for your report. I now return the chair to the president. The next business in order is the address of the executive director, Dr. Diane Mancino. Thank you, Madam President. When the city of Hunan and its 11 million people entered lockdown on January 23rd, 2020, with residents confined to their houses and transport networks shut down, as a nurse, I knew that something was really wrong. Day by day, I watched the news as the epidemic evolved into a pandemic spreading quickly across the globe. By mid-March, the governor of New York, Andrew Cuomo, ordered non-essential workers to stay home from work starting on March 22nd, as coronavirus cases were in the midst of a rapid exponential growth that overwhelmed hospitals. As early as March 12th, we began to receive inquiries from members and faculty advisors about the convention. There were reports emerging about college travel bans and discontinued clinicals for students as hospitals transformed into dedicated ICUs with little knowledge of what they were about to deal with. Lack of PPE, ventilators, and even oxygen began to spread throughout New York State as well as other states. One month before it was to take place in Orlando, Florida, the 68th annual convention was canceled. NSNA went on lockdown on March 20th, 2020. Staff worked from home. With revenue losses from the convention, staff was placed on reduced work hours from June 1st to August 21st. Although this was a hardship for staff, their true dedication and support of NSNA was evident. When we, permitted to, when we were permitted to, lock, to end the lockdown, the NSNA headquarters opened on July 6th. Strict rules are in place to ensure state, safe working environment following state and city guidelines. During this time, we have kept the operations maintained as staff teamed up to get the work done remotely. It was a quick and steady transformation to a virtual office. We met frequently via Zoom to keep communications flowing. Both the outgoing and incoming board met virtually. The new board was elected entirely online with video presentations and elections taking place using Election Runner. In April, the board of directors revised the operating budget by approximately $755,000 in reductions. Although we have a healthy reserve fund, there was and remains much uncertainty about how long the pandemic will persist. And we know that we must preserve the reserve funds as, as much as possible to make it last. You will hear more about the budget revision from the Secretary Treasurer later in this meeting. The NSNA board adapted rapidly to virtual workshops and meetings. Although they have never met in person, the current board bonded well with the leadership of President Randy Borden. They are working exceptionally well to develop policy statements related to current events. On March 23rd, the outgoing board developed and released with the guidance of the then president, A.J. Cook, and A.J., I see you're here. It's nice to see you. Guidance for nursing students during the COVID-19 pandemic and frequently asked questions about practice academic partnerships during the COVID-19 pandemic. The board endorsed the NCSBN practice academic partnerships with changes added to the model 
that would protect students' health and well-being. As the country was faced with, with violent protests following the death of George Floyd in Minnesota, the current board developed an advocacy statement entitled, All Lives Will Matter Only When Black Lives Matter. As an organization that represents students from multiple backgrounds and cultures, the NSNA acknowledges all who are impacted by this tragedy which took place in our nation. NSNA staff began to develop online programming, working quickly with Walters Clore to create an online Zoom state board review. We had excellent attendance and we will be holding a similar review program again at the upcoming virtual mid-year conference. Many thanks to the sponsor, Walters Kluwer, and the outstanding speaker, Dr. Desiree Hansel, for supporting this program for our members. As we were unable to gather in groups, the Virtual Leadership U Conference was developed and presented to over 400 members and faculty. We are now in intensely preparing for the virtual mid-year conference and for faculty and student workshops over the next two months leading up to the conference. NSNA has also collected data and stories about what students and faculty are going through and the impact of the pandemic on their lives. This will soon be published in imprint and online. We are adding COVID related questions to the upcoming annual new graduate survey to explore the impact that the pandemic is having on the new graduate workplace, workforce, pardon me. NSNA is very concerned about the disruption that has occurred and ongoing and nursing student education. Many hospitals expecting a second surge of the virus this fall are not accepting students for clinical rotations. This may increase the use of simulation and virtual case studies as opposed to live patient interaction. Changes in the NCLEX RN exam and in state board regulations for licensing must closely be monitored to ensure that there is not an adverse effect or an adverse impact on patient safety. As mentioned earlier, the operations of NSNA headquarters have been maintained. I am pleased to announce the appointment of Kenya Williams to the position of Deputy Executive Director. Kenya is a past NSNA volunteer and past president of both the NSNA and the foundation of the NSNA. NSNA is indeed blessed to have a professional and support staff with years of experience and loyalty to the association and its members. In January 2021, we will vigorously, vigorously begin planning the 69th annual NSNA convention, which takes place in Houston, Texas, April 7th through the 11th. Of course, that depends on how quickly a vaccine can be developed and administered. And we will have a convention, if it's uh, live or virtual or hybrid, it will happen. The NSNA board, the Nominate Elections Committee, and the Resolutions Committee, along with the staff, are equal, eager to ensure the viability and the vitality of NSNA as we not only adapt, but innovate to make NSNA even stronger and more relevant. We call on every chapter, state association, faculty advisor, and member to help us maintain membership in this organization. Now, more than ever, Nursing students need NSNA to advocate, educate, and prepare them for the challenges that, when, that will inevitably face them as future leaders of the nursing profession. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Dr. Mancino. We have provided each delegate a link to the NSNA 2020 Annual Review, which contains the business book and includes reports on NSNA activities up to April 2020. You will hear some verbal reports. You will also hear some verbal reports. The next business in order is the report of the Finance Committee. NSNA Secretary Treasurer and Finance Committee Chair Stacy Kinsey will give the report. Thank you, Madam President. 
Good afternoon, I'm Stacey Kinsey, NSNA 2020-2021 Secretary Treasurer. The NSNA Board of Directors have the fiduciary responsibility for NSNA's finances and assets. This responsibility includes ensuring the long-term financial viability of NSNA by reviewing the organization's financial performance against its goals. It also includes evaluating and reporting to the board any major transactions proposed by NSNA's management, making decisions regarding funding and the capital budget, approving the investment policies for NSNA reserve funds, oversight and approval of the annual operating budget, and examining the internal operating reports, including the income statement of activities provided by staff. Next slide. To begin, I will focus our attention on 2019 audited financial figures. I will first give you a historical background. The 10-year revenue chart above shows the trend in NSNA's major revenue categories over that period. Membership dues rose in 2010 and 2011 and has held steady thereafter. Advertising revenues hold steady at over $250,000 over the 10-year period. This revenue line bottomed out in 2014 increased slightly in 2016, and then dipped slightly during 2019. This is largely explained by the continued decline in hard copy ads, but we have been seeing an increase in demand for ads in our broadcast emails. Next slide. This audited results chart shows the results for fiscal year 2015 to 2019 and breaks out the activities into two sections, operating and non-operating. Non-operating activities include investment gains or losses. The audited results in the income statement for the year ended December 31st, 2019 is seen in the last column in the above schedule. I will refer also to the two pie charts on the next slides breaking down 2019. The last column is the summary result for fiscal 2019 with total revenues of $3,385,800 and expenses of $3,319,604. NSNA experienced a surplus of $66,196 in 2019. Next slide. This revenue chart breaks out NSNA's 2019 operating revenues of $3,037,648. Take a moment to look at the breakout figures. NSNA's most significant revenue stream at 48% is from membership dues. Convention and conferences brings in 20% and exhibit fees bring in 19%. Advertising and royalty revenues have experienced a downward trend during the last few years, although we do see an increasing demand for NSNA broadcast email ads. Next slide. Moving into the expense side of the income statement, the NSNA staff is diligent in efforts to reduce expenses. However, exp expenses increased due to two factors. One, to bring NSNA more in line with current technology and media to better serve its membership, more resources were allocated to this area. And two, NSNA experienced increases in the cost of employee benefits, such as health care insurance. In addition, there were increases in publication design, printing, and postage costs, which continue to be an upward trend over the last few years. In this current fiscal year, the NSNA board made the environmentally friendly decision related to conserving natural resources and reduced costs by moving the hard copy imprint into a digital format. Next slide. This chart represents NSNA's unrestricted net assets, also called reserves. Reserves are a key benchmark used to show fiscal strength. The cumulative net assets or net worth have remained stable and strong at $2,015,705 for fiscal 2019. Net assets represent the accumulated earnings of an organization. The bottom chart shows the increase or decrease in the net assets in each fiscal year. Note that unrestricted net assets can be used for operations. Next slide. The NSNA Board of Directors established a goal of 50% of the annual operating budget for operating reserves, a standard percentage recommended by many nonprofit organizations. Having reserves above the standard percentage allows an organization to sustain economic downturns or other unexpected events, such as COVID-19, and provides a cushion in uncertain political and economic times. 
NSNA's reserve balance at the end of 2019 allows NSNA to operate for at least six months without income. However, market conditions impact reserve investments and may occur simultaneously with natural disasters and pandemics. The reserve ratio chart shows that NSNA has consistently exceeded the policy of 50% over the last five years, with a high of 74% in 2015, but slipping to 58% by year-end 2019, mainly due to cumulative prior years unrealized market loss. Next slide. NSNA's investment policy takes a conservative long-term investment growth strategy and mandates a low to moderate investment risk tolerance. The policy seeks to preserve and increase this investment over time through investment income and capital appreciation. NSNA's Finance Committee has paid particular attention over the years to ensure that the asset mix and other investment policies and strategies are being followed by our investment manager. As this chart shows, NSNA investment portfolio or its reserve brokerage account has experienced a steady growth over the past few years, weathering the Great Recession. The increase has been mainly due to a combination of prudent management by NSNA's investment manager at First Republic Securities Company, along with realized and unrealized gains. With a balance in 2015 of $2,406,813, it ended 2019 with a balance of $3,055,462, an increase of $648,649. Next slide. The 2020 operating budget was adjusted downward due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The prior NSNA board determined that the approved budget passed in November 2019 for fiscal 2020 was no longer relevant for 2020 in light of the severe economic downturn in the economy and negatively impacting NSNA's finances, including the cancellation of NSNA's convention in April 2020. The prior board approved the adjusted budget is shown here bringing the budget down from $3,380,301 to $2,624,000, I'm sorry, $2,624,831. Next slide. In conclusion, we maintain a strong financial position, but there is uncertainty related to the lasting effects of the pandemic. NSNA is already working on ways to reduce these effects by reducing expenses and increasing membership benefits in order to maintain our largest revenue stream, membership dues. Many thanks, and I look forward to working with you this year to keep NSNA in a very strong financial position. We have time for a few questions, so please ask any questions you may have in the chat box. Leave your name, your school, and your question. Our president, Brandy Borden, will read them aloud. Are there no questions? Okay. First question is, how are you actively recruiting now that everything is online? I don't know if that's a question for me to answer or for um, for anybody else actively recruiting. Um, I from for our school, we're still um, getting the the new students to um, become members of NSNA and our local state uh, of our local chapter which then also includes our state chapter. Um, so everything is online. I feel as though, um, me personally, I feel as though it doesn't matter whether it's online or in person, it's still an added benefit to be part of the Student Nurses Association. You still have all the resources available to you and um, we're still, as an NSNA and state chapters, we're still providing um, valuable information to the students. Um, 
Our school has total enrollment. We sign all the students up during orientation. We explain all the benefits of joining with no downside for being a member. Thank you, Christy Raposa. Sorry, I can't always see. Um, Haley Olinger, alternate delegate, the Citadel Military College of South Carolina. How many delegates are needed required in a school chapter? Also, how do we find the closed Facebook group for the mid-year conference? Thank you. Um, let me start with the latter. So the closed group will be formed uh, when we do have the mid-year conference. It is at least right now not available. So if you did register and you were in attendance with the uh, leadership conference, we do have that closed Facebook group, but the mid-year will be, um, I believe Sarah Zhao will be creating that Facebook group, uh, Facebook group um, shortly. And as far as um, how many delegates are needed required in a school chapter, I can honestly say I don't remember at the moment. Um, in a school chapter, I believe it's 10. Yeah, I can I can answer that question. Thank you, Dr. Mancino. Okay, um, I, I assume that you're asking about at the national level because it may be different at the school at the state level. Uh, at the national level, you need a minimum of ten NSNA members to qualify for one uh, delegate at the convention. Um, if you, when you start going over, when you start going up to 50 members, then you get two delegates, and then with each additional 50 members, you get an additional delegate. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mancino. Um. We will be approaching freshmen and sophomores during rush week with a table, email sign-up, flyers, with all the benefits of being part of DNSN, DSNA and NSNA, Dixie State University. Those are great um, suggestions. That's, we do something similar. Um, if there are two schools next to each other, one for an ASN and one for a BSN, can they share a chapter? I, I think each school has their own chapter. Um, I, have, I personally have never heard of two separate schools sharing a chapter. If anybody else has um, something different to say, please speak up. I would just refer you to the, uh, to the NSNA bylaws. Um, you, you, have to have the, you can't combine uh, two different schools. You can combine them if they are um, a, a different campus of the same school. You can have either separate uh, chapters uh, if it's the same uh, school or you can combine them. Uh, but as uh, schools that are close by, you can certainly share activities together, uh, co-sponsor activities together. But in order to, uh, to have a chapter, it would have to be 10 members in each one of those schools. We had two chapters. This is Cheryl Schmidt in Arizona. When I was in Arkansas, we had two campuses for the same school, but they were so far apart, they each had their own chapter. So they wouldn't have to worry about trying to get to meetings 90 miles apart. So, but it was the same school, just two campuses. So that's another option. Um, so, there is uh, there's a question at Christy. How does your school have full enrollment? That is a project we are working on. Okay, so we have full enrollment, and the best way I can say this is that we all of our schools have virtual orientations or on campus orientations, but this year it's virtual. And we literally go in. We have usually our SNA president for. We have seven campuses, by the way and we are one chapter. So we, um, all of our SNA presidents go in and discuss the benefits of SNA and we all sign them up right then and there. It's, it's not a, I want you to think about this. It's come on, we're signing everybody up. It's not mandatory, but it's highly encouraged. And I've never had anybody say no. 
because there's no downside to being part of it. And if you go in and do it all at once for all of your new cohorts, then again, they don't say no. They just do it because they're first day of nursing school and they don't know what they're doing anyway. Um, how do we do it online? So we have it set up where uh, we have like a Google link that we send out to each student right then and there. And that populates to a NSNA spreadsheet that we submit for our school. Very nice. Thank you, Christy. No I problem. appreciate that. Um, okay. Any further questions? Um, yeah. one, of, one of our schools has indicated that due to the change in instructional methods, they are having a hard time getting 10 members. So, I don't really know if that's a question. Um, I know that here we had, last year we had Chamberlain College in New Orleans that wanted to start a chapter. And the, um, at the time, the president of the Louisiana State Association and several of us went to speak with them about how to start a chapter. So they, there was one person that um, wanted to do it, got her friend involved, got another friend involved. There were three of them. And then it just became them talking with other people um, saying, this is what we want to do. This is why we want to do it. And they got their state chapter involved to bring a presentation. So that's, um, that's what we did to, to help Chamberlain and um, New Orleans. But if anyone else has any um, other options, has there been any discussion in modifying the 10 member minimum for school chapters? Not that I'm aware of. That, that's a bylaws amendment. Um, it, it cannot be changed uh, without uh, approval of the house. Um, so it's, it's, it's not something that the board can change. Okay, so thank you very much everyone for your questions and if you have any other questions that we um, that you have and we don't get to, um, we'll get to them at a different time. And thank you Stacy for giving your report. The next business in order is the report of the nominating and elections committee. The chair calls upon Isabella Algayer, chair of the nominating and elections committee to give the pre-recorded report. Isabella Algar, and I'm the Nominating and Elections Committee Chair. Today I'll be speaking on Tomorrow's Leaders Building the Future of NSNA. My goal in the next few minutes is to give you a brief overview of the national positions and basic info on how to run for national office. There are many benefits of leadership in NSNA. At the local, state, and national levels, you have many opportunities to develop your skills in leadership, professionalism, advocacy, teamwork, networking, and confidence. As you take advantage of these opportunities, you may feel inspired to serve in even bigger ways. This brings me to the Board of Directors. Shown here are the 10 members of the National Board of the NSNA, nine of which are elected positions. Additionally, is the COSP, or a Council of State Presidents ex officio member. The members of the National Board work on various committees to move the work forward. These committees are Breakthrough to Nursing, Convention Planning, Ethics and Governance, Finance, Health Policy and Advocacy, Image of Nursing, 
membership, and population and global health. Separate from the Board of Directors is the Nominating and Elections Committee. The NEC mission is to seek out, encourage, and assist the most qualified members of NSNA. The committee consists of four members for the four election areas. I am NEC West and NEC Chair. Next to me is Jess Niebauer, who is NEC North. NEC East is Katie Pereira, and NEC South is Jennifer Bustos. For more detailed descriptions on the national positions, I will refer you to the digestive information for candidates on the NSNA website. While running for office, you have two options. You may be a pre-slated candidate or you may run from the floor. To be a pre-slated candidate, you must submit your application by the deadline, which is Wednesday, January 20th, 2021 at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. If you would like to run from the floor, you must be nominated from the floor during the House of Delegates business meeting. This occurs during the annual convention. In both options, you may not begin campaigning until you have been approved as a candidate. You may be wondering, why should I pre-slate? There are many benefits of being a pre-slated candidate. As a pre-slated candidate, you will be placed on the slate as a candidate before convention. So what does this mean and what are the advantages? As a pre-slated candidate, your name will be published in imprint on the NSNA website and advertised in broadcast emails to all NSNA members the months leading up to annual convention. You are allowed to campaign as soon as the official slate is released versus those running from the floor are not allowed to campaign until they are nominated at annual convention. This brings much less stress at convention because you will have all of your materials prepared and you can just focus on networking and advertising yourself as a candidate at annual convention. So what happens next? First, you can request an application through email by emailing nsna at nsna.org with NEC in the subject line. Next, you can complete the application and submit by the pre-slate deadline if you choose to pre-slate. This deadline is Wednesday, January 20th, 2021 at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Next, you can attend the NSNA Annual Convention. This will take place in Houston, Texas, April 7th to 11th in the year 2021. You may also begin considering who you would like to choose as your campaign manager. Though this is not mandatory, a campaign manager can be very helpful at convention during the elections process. Thank you so much for listening and please feel free to reach out to me with any questions by emailing me at necwest at nsnainc.org. Thank you. Thank you, Isabella. The next business in order is the report of the Chair of the Resolutions Committee from Crystal Akau, Chair of the Resolutions Committee. The next business in order is the report of the Chair of the Resolutions Committee from Crystal Akau, Chair of the Resolutions Committee. Greetings NSNA members, colleagues, and leaders in nursing. My name is Crystal Akau and I'm the 2021 Resolutions Committee Chair. Thank you for having me. Resolutions give us a chance to make a difference in the world of nursing. This year, more than ever, 
it is of great importance that you let us hear your voice. Being the detailed specific nature of the resolutions process, I will be reading from many of the following slides. It is of great importance we review each area in detail to set you up for success. Let's get started. So what is a resolution? A resolution is your chance to get more involved on a national level. It's a written statement that when adopted by the House of Delegates is the basis for the policies and actions of the NSNA. Who can author a resolution? Only SNA student members can author a resolution and they can be from constituent state associations, constituent school chapters, NSNA board of directors, or NSNA committees. One primary author per resolution and can only be the primary author for one resolution. All authors must be current students and NSNA members at the time of the NSNA convention in April 2021. There are three different types of resolutions. The first being a resolution of substance. This resolution gives direction for future action and defines an NSNA position on evidence-based policy. The second being a resolution of courtesy. This provides avenue to give recognition of contributions made to the NSNA by groups or individuals. Lastly, there's an emergency resolution. This is a call to action based on current happenings such as gun laws. Choosing a topic. So ask yourself, what are you passionate about? Is it relevant to nursing students or the nursing profession? Is it feasible? And does it adhere to the NSNA mission and bylaws? Imagine placing the words the NSNA will in front of your title. Be sure to review the most recent five years of NSNA resolutions to ensure your topic is unique. You can do so by visiting our NSNA webpage to view resolutions organized by year, being sure not to duplicate a topic within the last five years. That is 2016 to present. Resolution components. There is the title, abstract, whereas statements, resolved clauses, references, estimated costs and contacts. Because formatting must be uniform among all resolutions, authors must use the pre-formatted resolution template located in our NSNA resolutions webpage with a link here. This is an example of a resolution template. Whereas statements. Whereas statements present recent evidence of the problem within the last five years. Paraphrasing and summarizing the point is preferred to multiple statements on the same point. Whereas statements are not debatable in the House of Delegates and require one citation per whereas statement in APA format. And the limit to a whereas statement is 300 words. Resolved clauses. The first resolved clause contains the statement of belief, philosophy, or commitment you want the NSNA to take on an issue. The remaining resolved clauses list the desired implementation of the resolution action to be taken, organizations to receive a copy of the resolution. The abstract. The abstract is three to four well-written sentences summarizing the resolution, its purpose, and intended outcomes. Documentation. Copies of all supporting documentation with citations noted in the documentation by underline or highlight or page and paragraph number must accompany resolutions submitted. The estimated cost list. This is an itemized cost of implementing the resolution. For example, if a resolution resolve statement consists of a brochure to be sent out to major hospitals, how much will that cost? Contacts. Contact information for all sent to organizations, including organization name, contact name, email address, mailing address, and phone number 
must be included for individuals cited in all resolved clauses. This document needs to be created in an Excel spreadsheet. Post submission. This is where the work of the resolution committee comes into play. The resolutions are reviewed by the resolution committee. Viewed below, John Palmer, Olivia Christopher, Cameron Huston, Joelle Motley, and Marshall Mühlbauer, and myself, and we ensure that these resolutions have complete documentation, alignment with NSNA bylaws, are feasible and have legal implications, relevance to prior re resolutions previously adopted by the NSNA, and are national in scope. Combination resolutions. This is a chance to network and collaborate with individuals from across the country. Some years, there are more than one resolution that is similar in topic, and we offer the opportunity to these authors to collaborate into one resolution. If this occurs, just know that your topic is a highly relevant topic across the nation at this time. The 2021 NSNA Annual Convention. Authors must check in at Resolutions Committee Office upon arrival. The NSNA Board of Directors review proposed resolutions. The resolution hearings. Resolutions are presented in order of data finalization. Resolution roundtables. These are held 30 minutes before and after the resolution hearings. Make sure you bring hard copies of references. The House of Delegates. Debates and votes on proposed resolutions. The title of proposed resolution and whereas clauses are not debatable and can't be amended in the House of Delegates. Tips for success. Discuss your topic with instructors, clinicians, colleagues, and friends. Test out your resolution on a state or local level. Identify and prepare for arguments against your resolution. Embrace suggestions and edits. Bring supporting documentation. And remember to be positive, concise, and knowledgeable. Lastly, the submission deadline for the 2021 year is January 15th, 2021 at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. You can always reach out at resolutions at nsnainc.org. And we're happy to answer any questions that you may have at this time. Um, is the 300 word limit per whereas statement or all statement combined? Thank you for the question. The 300 word limit per whereas statement is, is per whereas statement. Um, Dr. Cheryl Smith, do you mind offering your insight into this? Sure, that's for the total uh, whereas statements. Let's say you have five different ones with a citation for each. Those total five res uh, whereas statements have to be no more than 300 words. You can't have like a dissertation for your resolution. Most resolutions are about one to two pages total. That's why we've limited the number of whereas's. Thank you. Um, when will we get the proposed? When will we get the propose? When we will get to propose our resolution? You can send them in as soon as you finish them. The deadline being January fifteenth at five p.m. That's when we will be able to look over them, distribute them amongst our committee, and be in contact with the authors of the resolution to let them know where to go from there. Any other questions for resolutions? I see one about, is there a limit to how many authors can draft a resolution? There's oh, one I didn't even see that. I'm, thank okay. you. No worries. 
uh, it's one, one primary and as many um, secondary ones, if they want to participate in it, it has to be student members. You can't have like your faculty advisor do it, but only one primary author that will be in communication with the committee. And especially if there is a combination resolution that the resolution committee recommends, then we include all the authors of those other two or three resolutions that are similar. Okay. If we already have one written up, do we have to resubmit? Yes, you will have to resubmit. If you're referring to the 2020 resolution year, yes, we are requiring that resubmission occurs and that this, the primary author is an active student during the time of submission. Actually, all the authors have to be active mem NSNA members. And you have to make sure that the one you thought was going to be discussed in 2020 is still current and updated for 2021. Okay. Um, will the annual national convention still occur in Texas or will it, would it be virtual? We're hoping it'll be in person, but we shall see. Hopefully everyone wears their masks and um, social distance. There was a question in here um, about the a possible updated version of the Catch the Wave video. Um, this doesn't have to do with the resolutions at hand, but we can address this um, at, at, late, at the end of um, when all the questions have been asked. So are there any other resolutions questions? Are we able to submit resolution in regard to changing the location for the annual convention? I'm not sure what that question means. I think I can answer that, that question. Are you asking uh, for the Houston, Texas uh, meeting? Um, and it wouldn't, we have contracts. <clears throat> you know, these meetings are set many years in advance in order to, first of all, to have a location. Um, so it would be very difficult uh, to change uh, the location. Um, I would ask that person if you would like to uh, contact me and we can discuss this more. I'd like to know, you know, what your concerns are. Uh, my email is my first name, Diane, D-I-A-N-E, at N-S-N-A dot O-R-G. Diane at N-S-N-A dot O-R-G. And Diane is with one N, D-I-A-N-E. So it's not a, a matter of a resolution. Uh, also, the House of Delegates would not have, uh, that, that would be a fiduciary responsibility <clears throat> of the Board of Directors. And the House of Delegates would not have the authority uh, to make that kind of, um, of a uh, resolution. It would be out of order. Uh, Lola, I don't know if you wanted to uh, add anything uh, to that. You're on mute. Um, no, I think you've answered. It sounded like the concern I saw in the question was that they regretted missing Orlando. But you certainly did supply the information that it's a board decision and it can't be changed due to contractual relationships. And when we, <clears throat> when we changed the contract, when we uh, canceled the contract with Orlando, we do have a future date in, in Orlando. So we will be back in Orlando. Not right away because we had other um, uh, convention contracts first, and I'm sorry, I, off the top of my head, I don't remember the year. Um, but we we will, ha if that's your concern, we will be back in Orlando. You'll probably be graduated by then, though. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Mancino. Um. Okay, so I'm gonna read this. Um, my name is Andrew Royer, and I am the president of the California Nurses 
of the California Nursing Students Association. This year, we made the important decision to forego a resolution at our state level when our board of directors made the decision to support the Black Lives Matter movement following the events surrounding the death of George Floyd. This isn't really a question, but I wanted to express thanks to the NSNA board for also taking this position and reaffirming its importance to the mission and values of NSNA. Appreciate that. And Jalea's here, she was chair for that. And Nicole and um, Kyle. Any other questions? So getting back to an updated version of the Catch the Way video, um, I'm not really sure if we have an updated version. I know with everything being virtual and us um, having more recordings that we may record something in the future, but as of right now, we do not have an updated version of the Catch the Way video, but it's a great idea and I thank you very much. Okay, so thank you very much, Crystal. Thank you, Madam President. The next order of business is the report of the foundation of the NSNA. Dr. Carol Tusi Weingarten, president of the foundation, will give the report. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. The foundation of the National Student Nurses Association is the charitable arm of the NSNA. It was created in 1969 for tax purposes as a 501c3. The foundation has staff at headquarters and a volunteer board of trustees comprised of leaders in various areas of nursing and business. Executive Director Diane Mancino and NSNA President Brandy Borden serve ex officio. The Foundation's activities focus on fundraising, especially for scholarships that support its vision of a thriving, diverse, and inclusive nursing workforce, leading healthcare to improve the quality of life for all. The annual Board of Trustees meeting in July 2019 was facilitated by a professional consultant and focused on strategic planning. The board has continued to meet throughout the year via Zoom and via conference calls. The theme of being there was selected for the foundation's fundraising initiatives for nursing scholarships. In addition, a full-time professional development officer whose role is to fundraise and to seek grants emerged as a priority. The growth and the success of NSNA and the foundation and the increasing scholarship needs of nursing students, especially since the pandemic, have made this position essential. Cancellation of the 2020 NSNA convention brought loss of income from what would have been one of the most successful conventions ever. In addition, a major sponsor now has other financial directions. Yes, we do have fundraising concerns. However, there's good news too. And here are some examples. Through the foundation, the 2019 3M Littman Stethoscope Grant Match raised over $100,000 for nursing scholarships. The 2020 NSNA t-shirt from the convention that wasn't became a collector's item and over $10,000 has been raised. Nearly $220,000 was di distributed in scholarships to 99 nursing students, and nine faculty received Promise of Nursing fellowships. The next application cycle begins in September of 2020. School chapter leadership grants were awarded to Adelphi University in New York and to Minot University in North Dakota. Dr. Edna R. Magpente Monroe 
the faculty consultant to the Hawaii Student Nurses Association, was selected for the 2020 Weingarten Leader of Leaders Award. A new scholarship was established in memory of Dr. Robert Piemonte, NSNA's and the Foundation's beloved executive director. Over 800 students participated in NSNA's virtual NCLEX RN mini review powered by Lippincott Passpoint. The recorded webinar sponsored by Walters Kluwer is now available for purchase. The National Summer Leadership U Conference held virtually in July 2020 raised over $14,000 and drew people from 175 nursing programs and as far away as Alaska and Hawaii. Further virtual events will be new sources of revenue in the year ahead. For example, a t-shirt sale and fun run in your own setting are being planned for the virtual mid-year conference. The NSNA store remains open for online shopping. Sales of NSNA merchandise, such as graduation cords, patches, and stoles, which recognize members, student leaders, and advisors, have totaled nearly $100,000. Part of that goes to the undergraduate scholarship program. Amazon Smiles website brings potential for half a percent of purchases if the foundation is designated by shoppers. With so many people shopping online, this is a great opportunity for further development. Dr. Diane Mancino and I as her alternate represented NSNA on the National Nurses on Boards Coalition. This group brings together major nursing and other organizations in support of nurses on boards and other decision-making groups. So, in summary, the foundation and the NSNA are alive and they are strong. Through technology, members, advisors, and consultants can turn to NSNA and the foundation for connection, education, and support despite these uncertain times. Fundraising, a development director, and creative ways to stay connected need to be major priorities in the year ahead. Please value your own impact too. Your contributions of any amount make a difference. Purchasing merchandise can be done through the NSNA website, nsna.org, and donating can be done easily through the foundation's website at forevernursing.org. Thank you to NSNA's awesome staff and NSNA's awesome board of directors. Best wishes to each of you. Stay safe and stay in touch through NSNA. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Weingarten. And thank you to you and the FNSNA trustees for all that you do to support the NSNA. I am pleased to report the results of the 2020 elections, which took place virtually April 16th and 17th, 2020. The 2020-2021 Board of Directors elections results. President, total votes cast 245, Brandy Borden, 131 votes, Genevieve Salas, 113 votes, Ryden, 1. Vice President, total votes cast, 248. Luis Diaz, 246 votes, Ryden's, 2. Secretary Treasurer, total votes cast, 247. Stacy Kinsey, 247 votes. Imprint Editor, total votes cast, 249. Andrea Romano, 249 votes. Breakthrough to Nursing Director, 
Total votes cast, 249. Jalea Townsend, 249 votes. Director North, total votes cast, 249. Nicholas Fulmer, 249 votes. Director South, total votes cast, 248. Emily Bruner, 248 votes. Director East, total votes cast, 248. Kyle Luce, 248 votes. Director West, total votes cast, 248. Nicole Abel, 248 votes. Nominating an Elections Committee North, total votes cast, 247. Jessica Niebauer, 247 votes. Nominating an Elections Committee South, total votes cast, 247. Jennifer Bustos, 246. Ryden, one. Nominating an Elections Committee East, total votes cast, 249. Katie Pereira, 249 votes. Nominating an Elections Committee West, total votes cast, 243. Isabella, Al Al Isabella Algayer, 126 votes. Iris Isabel Martinez, 117 votes. Nominating an Elections Committee Chair, total votes cast, 244. Iris Isabel Martinez, 81 votes. Isabella Algayer, 73 votes. Katie Pereira, 43 votes. Jessica Niebauer, 25 votes. Jennifer Bustos, 22 votes. Although Iris Isabel Martinez received the most votes for chair, she was not elected to serve on the committee as the NEC West representative. I have the following announcements. The next NSNA annual business meeting takes place in Houston, Texas, April 7th, 9th, and 10th, 2021. I hope that you will join the NSNA Board of Directors for the many upcoming board webinars and the very first virtual NSNA Mid-Year Conference, October 29th through 31st, 2020. We have a lot of excellent programs planned to include the keynote address delivered by Dr. Ernest Grant, the first man elected president of the American Nurses Association. NCLEX review, workshops, and networking opportunities. Remember to watch your mail for the link to the new webpage for virtual meeting guidelines and resources. 2020 is a national election year. Be sure to vote and to work with others in your chapter to get out the vote. I will be conducting a school president's forum in September. Spread the word and watch for more information. Be sure to register for the Pharmacology Made Insanely Easy and Med Surge Made Insanely Easy workshops. Please go to the NSNA website for more details. I look forward to seeing you at the Mid-Year Conference. Thank you to everyone. Please stay online now for drawings for great prizes. You must be present to win. This meeting is now adjourned at, at 5.20 Eastern Time.